Welcome to BCH Technologies. Today we're going to work on a workforce 3640. You can see the printer had no problem to start and uh, to go into ready mode. But as soon as you print a page, and this is what's going to happen. So this printer was from a company that only uses OEM Epson ink. And now I just print a, a print of a random page, let's say the nozzle check page. So nozzle is completely cocked and also there's a uh, error uh, 97 which is the, there's something wrong with the internal hardware. Uh, this printer and also, and also all of those printers, they all use T252 cartridges. And if you follow the internet, there are lots of problems with this, uh, those printers. And you're going to see why. Actually, it's pretty easy to fix. Also, when a person has a problem with this printer, uh, they normally just sell it very, very cheap. So you get a, a couple hundred dollar printer that people sell it for forty, fifty dollars. And here's a one example from uh, from uh, Facebook. And here uh, here's a local pickup on eBay. Uh, most of those clocks are caused by Epson ink because Epson is using uh, pigment ink. Uh, in those kind, in those uh, series, and also they didn't de they didn't design a strong pump for unclogging. Uh, we have some strong believers of Epson's uh, OEM ink, so I'll stop here talking about Epson ink. Uh, what I'm just going to show you is that this this print head is using Epson ink all the way. There are two tabs on the right, and uh, there's another tab on your left. Uh, you don't need any tools, you can just use your fingernails to pull it out. Uh, this is more advanced version, so I'm not going to bore you about how to uh, cut the power offs and uh, so you can move the, move the, the carriage. Uh, then <clears throat> on the right side, <clears throat> try to find a little hole, and uh, that's the that's the one uh, that's the one that the uh, right tab going to attach to. So just just use a screwdriver to press it in, and then lift it up. The left side is a little bit harder. Uh, let me show you where the hole is. Uh, see that uh, little that hole with a little bit white. The white is part of the white plastic outside, and uh, you see the white plastic, and there it is. Let me just use a long needle uh, to show you one more time where's the hole. So I poke the hole inside. And uh, from the outside here, you can see that. The best tool to use is your long needle for the refill. But here I happen to have a really small screwdriver. Forget about it. I'm going to back to the needle. This piece can be removed easily. The purpose of it is to hide those cables. Then we will remove the three screws. And then we can pull the, 
uh, the print print head out. And then just for a stupid person like me, I'm going to write a B uh, means means that this side of the ribbon is going to be towards the bottom. And uh, I'm going to do it for each side of the ribbon, the bigger ribbon and the smaller ribbon. So uh, when I put it on, I know that this side is towards the bottom of the brunette. Okay, you might spot some problem here. I'm, I'm going to show you what's wrong with it. So remember, this is uh, original printhead, original Epson. We didn't do any cleaning. We just took it apart. So it's easier for us to see what the original problem is. And see the problem there? OK. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at what's going on inside. You can see there's a leak inside the printhead. So, so the yellow ink flooded uh, the circuit board. When there's no electricity connect to the to the printhead, and uh, the printer is fine, but once you start printing, and that that's where the problem starts. So we're going to clean the uh, the electronic board, and also we need to deal with the clogging, uh, the clogs made by those pigment ink. The top piece is just rubber and steel, so we just throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, clean it. Uh, take a look at the chunks of a pigment. They don't. They, they do not uh, uh, dissolve in water. They just suspend in water. So once it's concentrated, it's really hard to get rid of it. Uh, when the top piece is cooking, we let's work on the bottom piece. So we take a, a, a we take a, a priming syringe that we flip the side of the silicon tip. Uh, let me show you where to get those priming priming clip and uh, the cleaning solution. It's right here under accessories and the priming clip and the syringe. And the cleaning solution is also under accessories, anti-clogging agent. Uh, you can see the nozzle coming out very evenly. That's a good sign for for the for unclogging Now we're going to use ultrasonic cleaner for the print head. Ultrasonic cleaner they clean by creating microscopic bubbles. So when those bubbles burst like that, and uh, that is going to create a temporary vacuum, and it's it's like a, a thousand thousands of uh, little tiny bubbles sucking on you. So uh, that's how. I can dislodge the pigment and uh, so clean the clean uh, The ultrasonic cleaner is uh, safe to use, uh, except ultrasonic can destroy any kind of foils. 
So uh, therefore, the ultrasonic cleaner, you cannot use it for things like a microphone or speakers. Or there are some uh, uh, Epson uh, clean head, they use a foam to separate colors. So if you, you, if you use uh, the ultrasonic on, on those, uh, that's going to destroy the clean head. And not all the ultrasonic cleaner are created equal. Um, when you buy on the market, most likely you're going to get a 45 kilohertz uh, cleaner. Uh, the one we use is a uh, high frequency is 80 to 85 kilohertz. Uh, here's the SEM for, for the nozzle. Okay, to be able to clean inside the nozzle tube, you need a bubble smaller than the diameter of the tube. The size of the bubble depends on the frequency. For example, you have a 45 kilohertz, which is uh, popular on the market. You're going to have a 6.5 micron bubble. And uh, the Epson precision core radius is 10 micron. So you're, you're okay, you can fit in so the regular ones are from the market works. However, if you use 85, 80 to 85 uh, kilohertz, it will work better because you're making much smaller bubbles. We have some uh, ultrasonic cleaners uh, under accessories, uh, but today the one we use is uh, our new model, uh, which is a lot cheaper than this. Our new model is spe specifically designed for the print head and uh, is well under $1,000. Uh, so we did a 10 minutes on one side and then uh, 10 minutes on the other side. When you pick up an ultrasonic machine, make sure you pick the one with a basket. Not only because a basket will uh, provide extra protection of scratching, also, the U parse is supposed to be suspended in the liquid. We're gonna cover the print head with this special tape. At home, you can just use a saran wrap. We blow dry with uh, compressed air. And then we just put it there like the air dry.
oh, oops. Um, we will see this air is normally um, there's a clear ribbon behind the printer, and uh, your cartridge call that the ribbon. Uh, when you when you work on your cartridge, it's very likely you just touch it and get caught in a slot. Let me show you where this, where it get caught. Uh, see that clear belt? Caught right here in the slot. You can use your finger to push the ribbon out. Now it's asking for cartridges. Because we already thoroughly cleaned the printhead, we decided to use a BCH cartridge uh, to convert the whole system into a dye ink cartridge, a dye ink printer. For all the third-party cartridges, Epson will throw this uh, uh, through this error and say those are not Epson cartridge, and uh, then do you still want to use it? And you just say okay, 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 and uh, that's it. Okay, you can see the printer can read the ink level no problem. So now we just go go to print a couple pages. Uh, the first cleaning didn't look good, so we just uh, do another cleaning. Uh, we did the three cleanings, then we wait about an hour. We finally got the result we wanted. I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Thank you. Cheers.